Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome back to the project. Today is a great day. It is the day where we prepare for our XJ rear disc brake conversion. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and take off the rear disc brakes from this ZJ uh, and we're gonna prepare to get them on that XJ. So Black Beauty is finally gonna get rear disc brakes. And in this video, we're gonna go through everything you need to know about pulling your parts from a donor vehicle from a ZJ. So let's go ahead and set this up, get it ready for the stripping. All right guys, so back in the day when I used to do this pull, I used to find all the parts I needed in a junkyard ZJ, but nowadays it's probably more common to find somebody on Facebook Marketplace parting out a ZJ from their driveway. So uh, I'm gonna go over a list of things we need um, to get a ZJ disc brake set off uh, someone that has a ZJ just laying in the driveway. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure you have jacks, jack stands, uh, some, some wood in case it's in a muddy spot. Uh, definitely paper towels, a BFH, uh, some power tools, and we're gonna go over a list of the things that we need as we go through this project. So uh, this video will be geared towards uh, pulling um, ZJ rear disc brakes off a parts car that's uh, in someone's driveway. Kinda like this. <laughs> All right guys, so you could do this disc brake conversion to just about any XJ, and you're gonna want to find basically any ZJ that has rear disc brakes. So um, 93 to 98 are the year they made ZJs and you're gonna wanna find a ZJ that has the rear disc brakes. And I'm gonna look for a ZJ that has ABS because my Jeep has ABS and I wanna retain the ABS on my XJ. All right, guys, some of you might be thinking, hey, Dan, I got a Chrysler eight and a quarter on my XJ. Will a Dana 35 set of disc brakes fit on my Jeep? The answer is yes. Dana 35 disc brakes will fit on a Chrysler eight and a quarter rear axle. The only thing you have to do is kind of grind out the center section so it slides on the larger diameter axle. Another question you might be asking, how do I know if I have a Dana 35 or a Chrysler 8 and a quarter on my XJ? Well, it's simple. Chances are, if you have ABS on your XJ, then you have a Dana 35. Most XJs that don't have ABS have a Chrysler 8 and a quarter. All right, we got this nice and secured on jack stands. Slide out my center piece of wood, and I'm gonna exchange the wood for cardboard and a catch basin so I can open up this diff. All right guys, so we're being safe. We got both front wheels chalked. We got a uh, catch basin down with some cardboard because we are simulating someone's driveway. We're gonna wanna keep this clean. Uh, and if you'll notice that I also have the wheels still on the Jeep. Why? Because I'm gonna do as little work as possible until I know that I could get the backing plates off. So to determine that, we're gonna to have to take off all of these 13 millimeter bolts and we're gonna check the center pin and try to get that retainer pin out. If we can't get it out, if it's broken, we're gonna scrap this whole project. We're gonna go find ourselves another donor vehicle. So battery powered impact gun, check. 13 millimeter socket, check, swivel, check, good stuff. You know what? I'm gonna put this top one back in just till I get all the juices out. Hand thread this in. I'm gonna knock this off. This looks like it was sealed very well with RTV. All right, so we got a small screwdriver and a putty knife. Add these to the tool list. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out. What? What the heck? This is bone dry. Bone dry. <laughs> bone dry. Wow, what a parts car. Holy crap. Didn't see that one coming. So here is the inside of our Dana 35 rear diff. We're just gonna spin these tires because we are gonna want to take out this center pin. Now, how you do that is you gotta find the center pin retainer. 
bolt and there she is now this is it guys this is the point of uh no return i guess if you can't get this out then you're gonna want to just <laughs> tighten up these tires take your tools and get the heck out of here i have had to abandon uh rear disc plates on a zj before because this piece actually broke the head of this bolt popped right off i had it on my workbench for years just as a reminder to uh, get this done first before i do anything else so this i've seen in a variety of sizes this one right here is is actually uh, a quarter inch 12 point um, I have seen these in hex bolts, uh, like 8mm, 7mm, all different sizes. So uh, when you do this project, be sure to have a variety of 12-point uh, box wrenches and uh, different size sockets in case. You could also use the uh, little extender with another um, uh, adjustable elbow and uh, a swivel. So we're going to go ahead and take this out. I pre-loosened it for demonstration purposes to not look stupid on this project in my own driveway. Uh, you will find out that they're usually uh, well lubricated. This one wasn't. You could probably also preheat them with a uh, good old torch. So add a torch to your uh, pile of tools. All right, guys, we're going to rotate our carrier up with the tire. We're going to slide in our screwdriver. We're just going to wedge it right in here into a spider gear. And we're gonna rotate it down so this thing bites on. There we go. Now we can apply our downward pressure with our right size wrench. We're gonna break the tension on this. There we go. This is free now. We can resume our project. It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> Always a good day when these pop out. There we go. There is our center pin retainer. Now, slide out a center pin. Ta-da! Alright guys, once you got that center pin retainer out, you know it's going to be a good day. So then you can go ahead, might as well take off all these lug nuts and the tires, because uh, you're going to want to get to your prized rear disc brake mounting plates. <laughs> Long pause, here we go. I'm uh, I'm surprised I could talk and do something at the same time. I uh, usually can't, so. <laughs> I guess YouTube has improved my uh, multitasking skills just a little bit. I don't know. Not too much, I guess. If you look back on my first couple videos, I'm like half a moron trying to speak in front of the camera. Not a fan. But everything works out. This is what we want to get. All of this goodish stuff right here. <laughs> Next wheel. Pull this under the vehicle for safety purposes. So here we have it. We have our disc brakes on our driver's side. This rotor looks well rusted. The brake pads look fairly worn. Uh, the caliper. It's not terrible. You could probably rebuild it. But even though I'm not going to use all this stuff, I'm going to take it anyway because you get a core charge for the calipers. So save some money. Why not? What we really want is this, the backing plate. This is what holds the calipers on. It's the, the heart of the disc brakes. Jeez, um, look at this e-brake cable. It's not even connected. My word. I buy new e-brake cables too, so you don't need these. But, uh, heck, I'll see if I can take everything. Why not? All right, here we go. We're gonna remove the calipers. Gotta take off the caliper bolts with a uh, 13 millimeter. One. Two. All right, we'll slide this caliper out. There we go. Just gonna rest it up here. Nice. All right, now the rotor should come right off. Ta-da! And here is our axle and our backing plate, the uh, mounting bracket that we need. All right, so what we're gonna do right now, we're just gonna give our axle a little push. That should release our C-clip. There you go. 
All right, now that we have the axle out of the way, you can see the ABS sensor, and I'm gonna need this, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off too. All right, ABS sensor comes out with a eight millimeter. It's an eight millimeter hex head. So, am I tightening? Yes, I'm tightening. I am stupid. It is reverse. I should know better. I'm actually looking into the camera. Um, not that that has anything to do with going left or right. I don't know. I'm disoriented. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> Shut up, Dan. Oh, uh, boy. Come on, baby. So I'm taking this out because this has some plastic pieces in it. And um, I'm just going to give a quick demonstration of uh, torching these backing plate bolts because uh, they look pretty rusted on. So this is getting moved out of the way. I'll take it off completely in a second. So I'm gonna slide this next to the calipers. Now, take off our backing plates. All right, here we go. We need to take off these four 14 millimeter bolts or a 916s, I believe. Um, these probably have never been removed since the life of this vehicle and they look fairly crusted on. So I'm just gonna hit them all with some heat first and then we'll go ahead and knock them off. And also, if you have access to this vehicle and you know beforehand you're going to do this project, I highly recommend you uh, douse all this stuff in uh, penetrating oil. So, yeah, that would be a great thing to do. Because once again, if you can't get this off, well, that defeats the whole purpose of the project. So, these are coming off nicely. Nice. I'm gonna use these nuts again, so don't lose them. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention, it's nice to get a good tray. Bring a good tray that you could keep all your parts in, preferably a magnetic one, <laughs> so you don't spill anything. There we go. Backing plate removed. Easy peasy. Nice. All right, so now we're going to take our nuts out of our little magnetic tray. Thank you, Andy. We're going to thread them just to the tip of this bolt here because we're going to want to whack this thing with our BFH. We're going to want to remove these uh, backing plate bolts because the backing plate bolts in an XJ are a little too short to reach the backing plate for the disc brakes. Here we go. This is how you preserve the threads when you bash things out. So I'll tighten it so the threads are flush. I could put this down, I don't know, I'm still holding it. <laughs> Amateur hour. <laughs> yes. All right, here we go. Let the threads be nice and flush. And then you could go ahead and whack these out. Good pair of vice grips. Add that to the list of supplies. All right, for all you guys who want to retain the ABS, this is a very important thing for you guys to note. Uh, we're gonna remove our backing plate. Here is the ABS sensor, naturally. So the backing plate comes off, and you can see there is a notch right here and the flange of this axle. This is where your ABS sensor goes. So you will have to notch your axle just like this in order to get your uh, XJ having rear ABS. Um, yeah, if you want to retain it. So that goes in just like that. I guess the notch is, geez, it's about the size of my thumb. It's a pretty big size. So yeah, a lot of grinding for that, but we'll do that, no problem. All right, let's take the rest of this apart. All right, guys, I got to chug this water bottle because <laughs> I'm dripping brake fluid all over the place. Now, I was going to try to reuse some of this hard line, but um, as you can see, 
it's already cracked by just moving this caliper up <laughs> I touched it and I sprung a leak so uh, things to bring a couple empty water bottles there out of sight out of mind now we can just take off this soft line put this in our parts pile all right and the soft line 10 millimeter brakes in the brake pile all right so if your brake lines were good you just go ahead and take them off with the 10 millimeter let's go ahead and do this oh there we go more parts all right next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove every fastener and clip that's holding on my abs lines because i want to use my abs cables abs sensors I'll go ahead and snip off these little guys and then just follow this all the way up to where it goes underneath the back seat and when you're done with this that's pretty much all there is to do down here underneath the Jeep all right I'm up under the middle of the ZJ and I've released all the ABS uh, sensors up until this point this is a big rusty metal clip so I'm just gonna try to slide these up and out and it's pretty corroded so don't cut yourself <laughs> don't want to get a tetanus shot <laughs> amongst other shots with all this madness going on right now but <laughs> to disregard that don't want to get demonetized for mentioning certain things uh boy here we go so now this is released and this goes up into the bottom of the rear seat. So uh, let's go top side and we'll take a look at that from the other perspective. All right, now we're gonna come into the rear of the ZJ, pop up the back seat, and next to your Infinity sound system, you got a red and a black little clip here. This is where your ABS sensors plug into. So I'm doing this one-handed. There we go. Hey, you got strong thumbs. Yeehaw. I'm gonna pry this out. There we go. Those are pried out. And this little rubber grommet, you just push it through, and everything else slides right down. Bye bye. See you. There it is. All right guys, time to talk about the axles. Now, this axle shaft is from this ZJ with the Dana 35. You're gonna wanna keep these axles because you're gonna need this tone ring to retain the ABS. Now, if you don't wanna use the ABS, don't worry about it. Uh, if you have a Chrysler eight and a quarter, reuse your Chrysler eight and a quarter axles but I really want to use these axle shafts. I don't think I'll be able to because I'm going to want to tow this thing out of my house. So just like you guys would be doing when you're pulling parts off of some guy's uh, ZJ or whatever, you kind of want to put this axle shaft back so they can remove their parts car from their driveway eventually. Unless they have a flatbed and they just drag it up, uh, you're going to want to do the right thing and give them back something that they can wheel off their property. Um, so that being said, I'm going to put these axles back in the vehicle. It's a shame because they have virtually no wear. So they must be uh, newer axles. Um, this vehicle has 200,000 miles. <laughs> so it's pretty amazing to see these so clean. Uh, my XJ only has axles with uh, 100,000 miles, not even. So um, I was excited to see these in there. Unfortunately, I can't take them. But what I will take is three brand new lug studs. So that's gold. You're gonna want these studs because they're longer than the drum brake studs. You might be able to get away with these studs if um, you're only using steel wheels, but if you're gonna put um, wheels with uh, aluminum mags or something, then they'll probably be too short. So I'm gonna go ahead and whack these out and we'll take these studs with us.
there we go. I pulled three lug studs off of this axle. You could probably get away with driving on uh, only three studs uh, for a short distance uh, very carefully. I wouldn't push it, but uh, two, <laughs> I'm only reserving for a scrap vehicle. So uh, I got three on this side. I'll take three on that side. That means I only have to order, um, geez, what's <laughs> the math? Four more? Uh, good old math. So uh, yeah, all right, move on to the next one. And we'll get these back in the vehicle. All right, guys, so we got our axles back in. We got the wheels back on with only two studs each because we need them ZJ studs. Uh, so the wheels are on because we want to, uh, you know, we want to respect <laughs> the gentleman who let us take this ZJ apart, you know. He's going to want to get rid of this piece of junk off his property. So we uh, do our best. To restore everything to uh, a rollable condition so that includes the axles being on tires on unless you're in a junkyard then you you know do what you want to it but yeah this vehicle has to roll away so we're gonna lower this down and then we are almost done with this now I left this diff cover barely dangling because when I get to the junkyard um, I'm gonna see if they can hold this thing up for me with the forklift and then I'll pull the axles again and I'll bring the axles home I do like the way they are there's no wear so I really do want these axles if not I'll see if I could find some ZJ axles with the ZJ ABS tone ring on them so we are done down here for now just one more thing before we wrap this up all right guys, and the last thing you wanna do is take the proportioning valve out of the proportioning block. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your bag that's pre-labeled, <laughs> ZJ prop valve, and you're gonna to wanna to take this little rubber cap off, um, save that. You're gonna to wanna to take this 19 uh, millimeter cap, you need this. So we'll go ahead and remove this. There we go, so we're gonna need this here cap. We're gonna need this here spring come on and you're gonna need this here a valve so grab yourself a needle nose plier put that in the tool bag too there we go here is your proportioning valve and right, we're gonna bring all this set up to put in our XJ when the time comes so we're gonna seal it in the bag for now There it is. Well, all right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap for my ZJ rear disc parts pull video for my future upcoming XJ rear disc conversion. So yeah, uh, we got all our parts here. We got, you know, the rotors, even though we're not gonna use them, the brake pads, even though we're probably not gonna use them, the calipers, probably not gonna use those either. Uh, we really wanted to get those backing plates, the proportioning valve. Um, we're not gonna worry about the, uh, uh, the e-brake for now. Um, that'll be in another video. When I actually do the video, I'll specify everything that's going on the XJ. Um, maybe I'll even do a, a preparing a video, preparing the parts, preparing the e-brake uh, on the backing plate and all that good stuff. Uh, this part ZJ <laughs> didn't have anything on it as far as e-brakes concerned. Uh, but we got all our stuff. Um, I hope I portrayed a good simulation for uh, what you're gonna do when you visit someone's house, how to pull it from their driveway without making too much of a mess and uh, how to restore the um, ZJ back to rolling condition, you know, cause I'm gonna wanna roll this baby out of here. So the axles, um, I'm gonna wanna use those axles. So I'll probably pull them when the forklift comes right before it goes into the crusher, take those axles out. And they give me an opportunity to take the wheels off too. I'm probably gonna take these wheels also. Don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but yeah, that's gonna be it guys. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you guys on the next project. Now I'm going to simulate go home <laughs> and I know exactly where I'm going to put these things. So catch you on the next one, guys. Peace. <laughs> what do you know? 
Lord ZJ this crazy. <laughs>